I ask you to please silence your phones so that this evening's program may proceed smoothly. Thank you. Now please stand for the posting of the colors by the Wareham High School JROTC cadets. Please remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance led by Ava Brajoli. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Order. Arms. It is now my distinct pleasure to introduce Mr. Palladino, Principal of Wareham High School. Ladies and gentlemen, parents, guardians, esteemed faculty, and most importantly, the exceptional students in the sophomore and junior class, good evening. As we gather here tonight for the academic awards ceremony, we embark on a journey of recognition and celebration. We are here not only to honor academic excellence, but also to acknowledge the dedication, perseverance, and passion that each student has demonstrated throughout the school year. Tonight, we are privileged to witness the recognition of some of the finest young minds at Wareham High School. These individuals represent the promise of our future, the embodiment of our hopes, and the dreams for a brighter tomorrow. Before we proceed with the awards, I must extend a heartfelt gratitude to all the parents and guardians for offering unwavering support and encouragement to your student. <coughs> Your guidance and love have undoubtedly played a pivotal role in shaping the outstanding individuals we honor tonight. I would also like to express my sincere appreciation to our superintendent, Dr. DeAndrea, for his support and leadership. His dedication to our student success is truly commendable. Additionally, I want to extend a special thank you to the dedicated volunteers from the Committee on Student Recognition. Your tireless efforts and commitment to excellence have made tonight's ceremony possible, and we are deeply grateful for your contributions. And now, to the heart of the matter, the students. To each and every one of you in grades 10 and 11, I offer my utmost respect and admiration. Your passion for learning, your thirst for knowledge, and your unwavering commitment to excellence is truly inspiring. You have set a standard of academic achievement that is nothing short of remarkable, and tonight we celebrate your accomplishments. As we bestow upon the accolades you so deserve, remember that this is just the beginning of your journey. Each award, each recognition is a testament to your hard work and determination, but it's also a reminder of the endless possibilities that lie ahead. Embrace every opportunity, challenge yourself to reach new heights, and never lose sight of the incredible potential that resides within you. Congra congratulations, students, on, a well, on the well-deserved success. May you continue to shine brightly at Wareham High School. Thank you, and enjoy the rest of the ceremony. And now it is my distinct pleasure to introduce Dr. Matthew DeAndrea, the superintendent of Wareham Public Schools. Welcome, Dr. DeAndrea.
Thank you. Uh, good evening, everyone. Tonight, our students will be honored for achievement in academics, the arts, and physical education. Congratulations to all who will be recognized this evening. You have spent many hours studying, researching, and committed to this important work, and your accomplishments have made both your parents and your school community proud. And to our families, tonight's recognitions are not just for our students. Tonight's awards acknowledge a student's community of support, including parents, grandparents, extended family, and teachers. You have spent countless hours nurturing, teaching, and guiding our students. This is your night too. Thank you for the time you have given in support of our students. Their success is truly your success. Again, congratulations for your hard work and accomplishment. Thank you and enjoy the ceremony. awards. Our first awards of the evening are presented to those students who have earned the highest academic average in a specific class. They will be presented by a faculty representative of the academic department. This will be followed by the teacher awards. Each teacher at WHS has the opportunity to recognize one remarkable student from among all of their students. These recipients are a very select group those who display outstanding qualities in attitude, dependability, and scholarship. After the teacher awards, Mr. Palladino will announce the special attendance awards. This will then be followed by the special awards and scholarships. Awards will then be presented to recognize the top 10 students in the 10th and 11th grade classes, the gold scholars. The name says it all. These students have the 10 highest cumulative academic averages within each of their classes. Lastly, the Stone Scholarship will be awarded. Now, to start the proceedings, I would like to introduce Ms. Maselli to read the names of our recipients. She will be joined by Ms. Souza, the Department Chair of Special Education, to hand out the Career and Technology Awards. Technology, Antonio Cumon, Sophia El Sayed, Mariah Enos, JC Fry, Lily Hagen, Tiaja Morin Key, and Emma Nelson. Mr. Skelly, the department chair of mathematics, world 
Language, History, and PE to hand out the World Language Awards. Ryan Dave, French, three honors. Sophia El Sayed, French, one. Riley Florindo, Spanish, three. Addison Freeman, Spanish, two honors. Livia Jackson, French, three. Hannah Mill, IB Language Acquisition, year two. Shane Sylvia, French, two. And Savannah Winslow, Spanish, two. Braden Cannon, English 10. William Cobb, English 10. Cameron DeBeston, English 11. Sophia El Sayed, English 10 Honors. And JC Fry, IB Literature and Language. Year one. Jace LaPointe, English 11. Damian Leap, English Award. Colby Marcerini, Mar English 10. Hannah Milne, Ivy Language English Literature, Year 2. And Nevea Montron, Film Studies. Studies Award and Amber Knight Social Studies Award.
JROTC, Emma Sylvia, LET 3A Leadership and Community Service. Math Award, 
in Sahara, Lima, Geometry.
As principal of Wareham High School, it gives me great pleasure to present these awards tonight. At Wareham High School, we have a saying, you have to be on the job to do the job. This was something one of our mentors preached to the WHS staff. This year, the following students exemplify being on the job and doing the job. The Wareham High School Perfect Attendance Awards go to, for the 23-24 academic year, Hart Andre. <laughs> Jeffrey Poirier, <laughs> Ethan Tito, <laughs> and Landon Stewart. perfect attendance for the last three academic years. That would be grades 8, 9, and 10. And this award goes to Marina Kuta. But how about this? How about perfect attendance for the last four consecutive years? That would be 8th, 9th, 10th, and 11th grade. This award goes to Lane Potter. Tarasconi, who will begin presenting the book awards. Harvard University is the second oldest academic institution in the nation, and certainly one of the most distinguished universities in the world. Each year, this institution seeks to honor an academically outstanding student. The award is given to a junior who displays excellence in scholarship and strong character combined with achievement in other fields. This year's recipient has taken various advanced placement and international baccalaureate courses. She is a three-sport af athlete in field hockey and both winter and spring track. The student is also the president of National Honor Society and will be representing the high school at Girls State this year. Please join me in congratulating this year's Harvard Prize book winner, Lane Potter. Book Award was started by the Brown Alumni Association in 1960 and is awarded to a junior who exhibits excellent verbal and written communication skills. This year's recipient has tackled various advanced placement, honors, and international baccalaureate courses and is an active member of the boys' soccer team and winter and spring track teams. He participated in the 8th grade dual enrollment program and he is representing the high school at Boys State this year. And though he cannot be here, please join me in um, announcing and applauding Ethan Petito as this year's recipient. The Smith College Book Award is awarded to a student who exemplifies the same academic achievement leadership qualities and concern for others that characterize the thousands of women who have graduated from Smith College an academic institution with an extremely prestigious history. 
the student must be in the top 10% of her class. This year's recipient is currently taking courses at Bridgewater State University through dual enrollment. In, the past, in this past year, the student completed an intern at the International Career Development Conference in California and has been involved with the Viking Theater Company over the years. This year, she joined the winter and spring track teams. She will be attending Girls State on behalf of the Wareham High School in June and was recently named DECA president for the upcoming school year. It is with great pleasure that I announce this year's winner of the Smith College Book Award to Charlotte Roy. Yeah! The Endicott College Book Award goes to a high school junior with a minimum cumulative GPA of 3.0, who exhibits strong leadership skills inside and outside the classroom and has a desire for hands-on learning through internships and experiential learning. This student participated in dual enrollment in eighth grade and has taken various advanced placement and international baccalaureate courses. She is a member of the National Honor Society and has played girls basketball for the past three years. It is with great pleasure that I announce this year's winner of the Endicott College Book Award, Zora Andrews. The Rensselaer Medal is awarded by Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute of New York. It is awarded to a promising junior who has distinguished themselves in mathematics and science. If the student attends Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute, they will receive a merit scholarship worth $30,000 per year for four years. This year's recipient is an active member of the music program and has been involved in various advanced placement courses. The student also has a passion for art and participated in the eighth grade dual enrollment, dual enrollment program. Please congratulate the winner of the Rensselaer Medal, Tegan Baptiste. And now I would like to introduce Mrs. Oman, who will present the St. Anselm College Book Award. For the St. Anselm College Book Award, the student must demonstrate academic success and exceptional leadership qualities in the area of civic engagement. This year's recipient has taken various honors, advanced placement, and international baccalaureate courses in her career. She has completed an internship at the elementary school and works part-time during the school year. She is a member of the Student Council, Astronomy Club, and the National Honor Society. She also enjoys participating in journalism and writes for the school newspaper. This year's recipient for the St. Anselm College Book Award is Felicity DeSola. <laughs> Cape Cod. The award is designed to encourage intellectual excellence and recognize student achievement. 
To be considered for this award, the student must be in the top 10% of the class and have demonstrated intellectual leadership as well as having made a positive contribution to the extracurricular life of the school. This year's recipient was in the eighth grade dual enrollment program and since then has taken various honors, advanced placement, and international baccalaureate courses. In addition to this, the student has participated in boys basketball. Please welcome this year's recipient of the Dartmouth College Book Award, Aiden Jones. demonstrate the ability to be successful in the classroom and within their high school communities. The recipient of this book award is someone teachers recognize as a leader, a friend to others, and a scholar. This year's recipient recently transferred to Wareham High School and has demonstrated immense growth in a short period of time. He continues to grow both in and out of the classroom and consistently displays effort and critical thinking in everything he does. This year's recipient of the Curry College Book Award is Kareem Banton. This recipient is one that continuously works hard both academically and personally. Not only was the student in the eighth grade dual enrollment program, she has continued to challenge herself by taking advanced placement, honors, and international baccalaureate courses. This student writes for the Viking Times and has had articles published in the Wareham Weekly. This student has been a part of the volleyball team for the past two years, and she recently joined the school's DECA program, where she will serve as treasurer for the upcoming school year. The recipient of this year's Yale Book Award is Emma McWilliams. a high school junior who has demonstrated extraordinary service to the common good and an unusual passion for inquiry, discovery, and innovative thinking. This year's recipient is a three-season athlete playing field hockey in both winter and spring track. Additionally, the student has taken various honors, advanced placement, and international baccalaureate courses. Teachers have noted that she continues to display excellent effort and is cooperative, considerate, and respectful. This year's recipient of the Bowdoin College Book Award is Jayla Fernandez. Michael's College Book Award for Academic Achievement with a Social Conscience recognizes outstanding students who excel academically and demonstrate a sincere commitment to community service. Recipients must also be inductees in the National Honor Society. This year we are honored to recognize an outstanding individual for this award. 
The recipient is currently enrolled in the IB Diploma Program and was part of the 8th grade dual enrollment program. She has been involved in the school's DECA program for the past three years and attended DECA's International Career Development Conference for two years. Next year will be her fourth year on the volleyball team and she will be on the action team for DECA. The St. Michael's College Book Award goes to Hannah Milne. The Salem State University Book Award goes to a junior who demonstrated a commitment to the community through work, volunteerism, family peer commitment, and or civic engagement. The recipient of this award will receive a gift chosen by the university community, as well as a $1,000 scholarship to Salem State should they attend. The recipient of this award is a three season athlete playing field hockey and a captain for both spring and winter track. She is the Vice President of both the National Honor Society and Student Council. She, also, she has also worked as an intern at Wareham Elementary School during the summer. She was an eighth grade dual enrollment student and has taken various advanced placement and international baccalaureate courses. This year's Salem State University Book Award recipient is Ava Brajoli. The Suffolk Book Award recognizes a student who exemplifies a commitment to their education and school community. The recipient of this award has been heavily involved in the school's music program. Additionally, this student has taken various honors courses and an international baccalaureate course in English. Teachers note that he has consistently demonstrated commendable effort and is a pleasure to have in class. This year's Suffolk Book Award recipient is Isaiah Pizarro. Uh, the University of Vermont celebrates high school students around the globe who demonstrate the spirit of citizenship and scholarship. The Citizen Scholar Book Award recognizes a student in a rigorous college preparatory curriculum with a 3.5 GPA or higher who has made a contribution to their school or community. This recipient has demonstrated consistent effort and growth both personally and academically. This student has been heavily involved in both the school's music program and the JROTC program, where she has participated in various competitions and community service events. She continually goes out of her way to support others, never expecting a thank you in return. Her academic performance includes taking a variety of hands-on courses, along with taking an international baccalaureate English class. Uh, the University of Vermont Citizen Citizens Scholar Book Award goes to Emma Sylvia. The Brandeis University Book Award exemplifies commitment to the pursuit of academic excellence as well as a healthy respect for intellectual inquiry. In accordance with the ideals of the university regarding social justice, the recipient should be especially strong in the humanities. 
This year's recipient has been heavily involved in the school's music program and will assist in any way he can. He continues to advocate for himself and works cooperatively with his peers. Teachers have noted his genuine interest in the material and that he is a pleasure to have in class. He has been involved in the gaming club and has demonstrated resilience and composure both in and out of the classroom. This year's recipient of the Brandeis Book Award is Xavier Zahara. The Tulane University book is awarded to a student who embodies Tulane's motto of not for oneself, but for one's own, and has demonstrated excellence in academics, leadership, and public service. This year's Tulane Book Award recipient is, the recipient, this year's recipient is heavily involved in Wareham athletics through playing three seasons of football and has participated in both winter and spring track for the past two years. He has taken various honors courses along with both international baccalaureate and advanced placement courses. Teachers noted that his achievement is commendable and is cooperative and considerate both in and out of the classroom. This student will also represent Wareham High School at Boys State this year. This year's recipient of the Tulane University Book Award is Peyton Calvin. And now I am pleased to introduce Mr. Palladino, who will present the Gold Scholar Awards. The next awards are the most prestigious, the Gold Scholar Awards, presented to the top 10 academically ranked students in grades 10 and 11. They will be presented by Ms. Kivicki, Ms. Cannon, and myself. Without further ado, top 10 students for the class of 2026 and 2025. Please remain on the stage once you receive your award. Gold Scholars for the class of 2026, Samantha Bumpus. McKenna Duggan. Marina Kuta. Camden Morrison. Keenan Peterson. Jeffrey Poirier. Max Rocha. Kaylee Rose. Priscilla Ross. And Landon Stewart. to the Gold Scholars from the class of 2026.
And now, the Gold Scholars for the Class of 2025, Zora Andrews. Tegan Baptiste. Ava Bajali. Felicity DeSolo. Jayla Fernandez. Aiden Jones. Emma McWilliams. Ethan Petito. Lane Potter. And Charlotte Roy. Class of 2025, congratulations. <laughs> and now I'm pleased to introduce Ms. Kavicki, who will introduce the Stone Scholarship. come to the most anticipated part of the evening, the awarding of the Stephen A. Stone Scholarship. The family of Mr. Stone created this scholarship to honor his commitment to making opportunities for further education available to students of Wareham High School. True. Their intent was to encourage a student who, for reasons of family background or circumstance, might not have contemplated education beyond high school and for whom that opportunity would have a significant impact on the student and his or her family and community. The student should demonstrate character and integrity despite challenging circumstances, a sense of commitment to family, community, and society, possess a love of learning, and show potential to benefit from a college education in a profound way. Fighting. The Stone Scholar is selected and named in the student's junior year so as to encourage application to college with assurance of financial assistance. Assuming the Stone Scholar meets the qualifying criteria, this student will receive college tuition assistance of $10,000 in the freshman year and be eligible for the same amount their sophomore, junior, and senior years for a total of $40,000. <laughs> okay. We are very fortunate to have Deborah Stone with us tonight to present this scholarship. Deborah Stone is one of four children of Stephen A. Stone and his wife, Sybil F. Stone. Deborah has a doctorate in political science from MIT. She specializes in health and social welfare policies and has been a professor at MIT, Brandeis University, and Duke University, as well as guest teaching in many universities in Canada, Europe, and Asia. She has published five books and over 50 articles. She didn't keep count of how many students she has taught. However, she counts all the books they have published as her grand books. The book Deborah is most known for is a textbook called Policy Paradox, The Art of Political Decision Making. It has had four editions over 35 years and has been translated into six languages. The article she's least known for but is probably of most interest to you, is called The Herring Sheriffs of Buzzards Bay, about the herring run and board. Um. She has won many awards, 
but she told me that I shouldn't list all of those because you want to get on with the Stephen A. Stone Scholarship Award. Or Please join me in welcoming Deborah Stone to the podium to reveal the recipient of the Stephen A. Stone Scholarship. Hi, everyone. Thank you, Mrs. Kabicki, and um, congratulations to all of you who have won awards tonight. What an impressive group you are. And also, congratulations to your families and friends who are here to celebrate with you. And to our wonderful pianist, thank you for this. Before I present the Stone Scholarship, I'd like to tell you some stories to explain why my father was so passionate about education and why our family created the Stone Scholarship in his memory. My father's father came to this country from Poland in 1897 when he was six years old. I know that sounds like ancient history to you. It does to me too. I can't get my mind around the idea that I had a grandfather who was born way back in the 19th century. I never knew him though, because he died before I was born. Still, I refer to him as Grandpa Joe, even though it feels a little strange to call a person Grandpa when you only know stories about him. Three stories about Grandpa Joe stand out to me. First, he grew up without a father, probably without even knowing who his father was. It seems that his father abandoned his mother around the time little Joe was five, and she had just had another baby. In Poland at that time, being abandoned by your husband was and would be forever a mark of shame. To escape that shame and the poverty that would likely ensue, she brought Joe and his baby sister to the United States with the help of a relative who was already here and could sponsor him, sponsor them. Of course, this means that my father, Stephen Stone, never knew his paternal grandfather, just as I didn't know mine. The second story is that according to my father, Grandpa Joe loved learning and was an avid reader his whole life. But he had to leave school after eighth grade. By then, his mother had remarried and had seven more children. Grandpa Joe worked to help feed them and to ensure that they would at least be able to go to high school. Eventually, several went to college and one even graduated from law school. This means that my father, Stephen, grew up in an extended family that put a high value on education, not only for its own intrinsic pleasures, but also as a path to economic security and a ticket to all that American society has to offer. The third story is that Grandpa Joe died of a sudden heart attack when he was 48, and my father was only 21. Dad had just graduated from college with a major in economics and was a few weeks into his first semester in business school when he got the phone call. Yes. He had to drop out immediately and go to work in order su to support his mother and his 16-year-old sister. <laughs> like his father, Joe, Dad loved learning. He never told me that explicitly, the way he told me about Grandpa Joe's lifelong love of reading, but I saw it firsthand because from middle school on, Dad liked to look at my textbooks and talk with me about whatever we were studying. He also loved to teach us kids everything from how to ride a bike and do carpentry to economics and history. About five years before Dad died, it dawned on me that by becoming a professor and essentially staying in school my whole life, I was living out dad's dream. So the next time I saw him, I asked him whether he would have liked to become a professor if his father hadn't died when he did. I was so sure I was right that I was stunned by dad's answer. No, never. It never occurred to me to ask myself what I wanted to do. In my day, you just took whatever job you could find 
to earn a living. In that moment, I understood one of the most precious gifts Dad gave me and my siblings. Through his hard work, he enabled us to take for granted that we wouldn't ever have to leave school to earn a living, and that each of us could pursue as much education as necessary in whatever form each of us thought would help us to reach our goals. Sometimes I think my father thought of Wareham as his extended family, and that he wanted to do for its children what his father had done for his siblings and his children, and what dad had done for us. During the time he served on the Wareham School Committee, and for the rest of his life, he advocated tirelessly to provide Wareham students the best education possible to give you choices about your life pathways. As Mrs. Kariki said, the Stone family does not participate at all in the selection process for the Stephen A. Stone Scholarship. Only after the committee has reached a decision do we get to see the chosen candidates' applications. So this year, I was surprised how much the person's essays resonated with some of my family's stories, and in fact, make me think about them and want to tell you about them tonight. It's, okay. Like my father and grandfather, and no doubt like many of you, this year's recipient has what we might call a jagged family history with some rough edges and a few missing pieces. The recipient has older family members who wished for more education, but were prevented from pursuing it by economic and other obstacles. This year's Stone Scholar wants to go to college not only to realize their own dreams and to be better able to provide for their own future family. They want to be a role model to inspire their younger siblings to pursue their life dreams too. And this person wants to use a college education to change the world and to, to inspire others to do the same. Would you please join me in congratulating this year's recipient of the Stephen A. Stone Scholarship, Lily Hagen. Before we close, the Academic Awards Committee would like to express our appreciation and gratitude to Ms. Maselli for doing a wonderful job reading the names. <laughs> Isis Vieira for the beautiful piano music. <laughs> and Abigail Bellano for the lovely cover art on our program. JROTC cadets, the custodial staff, and all the teacher volunteers. This night would not be a success without your efforts. Thank you.